Today I'm talking with Yorick. Yorick is uh, one of our uh, engineer on the debate team and has been for what a year or two with the uh, event yeah. store. A year and a half now. A year and a half. And how was that year and a half? Almost, almost and a half, almost. Hmm? Almost. Almost, yes. <laughs> yeah. How was it? Uh, it was great, uh, in particular considering that I used to work on my spare time on even store DB. So now being able to uh, to work with it on a daily basis, uh, it's uh, pretty amazing, actually. Yeah. So you 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 work on your on your spare time. So before that, you did make changes or addition to the database. Um, very few, but most of my contribution uh, were about clients. Uh, so the first uh, client I wrote was a uh, Haskell client uh, because oh, at that time, yes, because oh. at, at that time I was very involved in Haskell. I still, I still am. It's just, it's not, I, I do mostly Rust right now, but at that time I was doing a lot of Haskell and I needed a database uh, that suit my needs. And at that time, even still was, uh, was the, the perfect match. But there, the, there was no client whatsoever on it for Haskell, so I will have my own. Um, and it's not, the, it's not like that, actually. Yeah. Later on, I also wrote a Rust client. And uh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. That, that, that original Haskell client, was that the TCP or? or TCP. Or did... both, TCP. In both cases, yes, I did TCP Haskell client and later on TCP Rust client. Which is quite a feat, actually, because the TCP uh, protocol is quite complex, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, actually, in itself, is is not that complex uh, in terms of it's basically protobuf two messages that you send uh, on frame packages. The difficulty is actually how you're dealing those packages because there is no specification, so. You can have major differences between two, two implementation, for example. Yeah. Uh, there is there was no actual differences between the .NET client and Haskell or Rust client because both have uh, runtimes. Uh, I mean, for uh, .NET and Haskell that support the same stuff. Uh, but for example, if we if I had to to write the same client in Node.js, for example, it will be, um, there will be a lot of differences because for example, it's not just a simple event loop in .NET, for example, it's a, a real uh, multi-threaded uh, runtime system. So I will have to change the implementation just to have a good performance. So yeah. that's why you have, uh, you could have different behaviors uh, whether you use a certain technology or not. So the difficulty is not really about communicating, it's just how you're dealing operation with tries. Uh, the, also the, um, the fact you are, you are resilient and you are able to connect to a cluster. Typically there is no spec on it. So either you uh, reverse engineer by looking at the code or you came up with your own implementation, but because there is no specification, yeah. Everything can happen. <laughs> so <that's what. laughs> yeah, I guess it got better with the, the GRPC protocol. It is, yeah. definitely. It is. Because now, basically, you uh, pass all the um, communication to uh, a standard. So you don't have to focus on all those crazy details. Even if, uh, from a developer perspective, it was... I think for me, it was funnier to actually deal with TCP client because you can do uh, low level stuff with it. With gRPC, it looks very similar to uh, a regular REST API. <laughs> so it's, it's not as funny to implement, but there's you know, still something here and there that we can do. Yeah. And, and so you were using event store before before joining the company yes i started using event store uh at the end of 2014 uh, i was working for a startup at that time and uh, they were they were using uh, event store db it was the first time i heard about that database 
And then after I quit the company, I wanted to work on a personal project. And as I said earlier, I was uh, very, uh, I was really into Haskell at that time. I still am, but not as much as I used to be. And I needed, I needed really to, I want, I really wanted to to use even store DB. So the only solution offered um, that I was that I had at that time was to write my own client. So that's how it, it started. But yeah, after that, I also used the DT, the database um, uh, at multiple occasions. Uh, Sometimes by client I got uh, because I was uh, independent at that time. And my previous job also involved using even install DB. We had um, uh, one cluster of a uh, little good size uh, where we were using it at our few jobs. So yeah, I would say I have roughly five, six years of experience with even install, maybe something like that. Yeah. So you brought that experience back into the into the company. Yeah, in the funny part, it's the first company I ever worked with where they didn't have to introduce me the product, right? Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> usually you have that period where, oh, we're going to introduce you the, the product. This is what, what we have. This is what it does. And here, I was already familiar with the source code on almost every aspect. So I was able to get started with, without having to spend a significant amount of time uh, of, on knowing the terms, the project itself, how to install it and stuff like that. So it was funny because it never happened to me. Yeah. Oh, that, well, I mean, that, that's, uh, that, 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 that's a good thing. So uh, you say you absolutely wanted to use uh, Event Store, but what makes it, what, what, that, what did make, why? Did you absolutely? I mean, what did, what does it offer you that you say I want to use that uh, and not something else? Because the core, uh, the core um, operation of the database are very uh, similar to how you will handle data in a functional programming setting. Yeah. So you're basically doing uh, folds, right? In Haskell, everything is basically a fold. <laughs> yeah. Everything. So. The database, because of the way you interact with data, was very functional by nature. It was a perfect fit for so many things. So that's why I wanted to use that database. I was surprised, actually, that it was possible to have a database like that, because at that time, I was, I was much younger than now. And I thought I would, I would, be to con I would have to content with just SQL database and stuff like that. I, I tried MongoDB. I was not a fan of, of it for what I wanted to do, at, uh, at least. And to be able to just have something that that is, uh, I want to say tethered for functional programming was uh, really, uh, really amazing. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had with other people some, some discussion as well. And, and what they notice is that it's not about the database itself now, it's about uh, event sourcing, is that people who kind of grasp it quite more rapidly than other are, are people who have functional background, functional programming background, and people who have a, a messaging and integration background as well, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But it seems it's those two types of, of people who have that kind of experience kind of jump into it and, and don't want to go out because yeah. it's it's so similar to, to, to that broader experience that you don't want to do something else, actually. So. Yeah, I, I don't see, I don't need to adapt my code to the database. Yeah, that for me, it's a ma it's a, it's a major feature, because usually when you have SQL, you have some friction between how you're going to map your data with the with the database, and the interaction with the database is not as smooth as uh, as you would like it to yep. be. So. A lot of people came up with their own RRM implementation yep. with uh, a certain amount of success, maybe, even if I despise those kind of library usually, because I don't really know what they do underneath. Uh, but I, I didn't have that with, uh, I didn't have that with, um, 
we even store DB. I was just I was just able to use it basically like a list of, of stuff that I can fold uh, my function with. And it was it was very uh, very very different. And as you said, it's very hard to to switch to something different when you're used to something that is perfectly tailored for you, your uh, your way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do agree. But I guess there are probably some things about the, the, the product in itself that you want to uh, improve. Uh, yeah. yeah, obviously. Uh, otherwise, why, why I would work for a company if I don't think there is something uh, we, we can yeah. do better? <laughs> yeah, what, 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 what can we do better? Uh, uh, me, personally, uh, I will say uh, anything that will empower the user to navigate through uh, their data mm -hmm. and and to be able to quickly uh, draft some concept of an application just by being able to play interactively with the data. I think that's somewhere we, we can improve a lot. And I came up with uh, several um, projects in order to see how we can achieve that. Uh, in the beginning of the year, I uh, implemented a SQL interpreter where we were able to, no, actually it was not the SQL interpreter, it was the Lua interpreter first, where the, the goal was to be able to script, right, rapidly with the database without having to think about, oh, I need to instantiate a connection that I need to pass uh, everywhere, uh, or, or, or even the, the the fact we don't need to actually have a, a real application just to be just to get started, right? Because it was Lua, you was able to quickly come up with some code, some interaction with database without all the jazz you need with a proper um, application. And after that, I switched to um, being able to 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 run SQL queries because. Even if I, I'm not very fan of uh, SQL database for the most part, uh, I think the, the SQL language is actually uh, really good. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, actually, I don't find a more uh, efficient way of expressing queries. Uh, I mean, if you compare SQL with anything else, I don't see SQL being actually uh, worst. It's really good. It's a serialized query. It works very well and it's abstract. So you can basically apply that query against whatever you want. Yep. And um, my um, proof of concept proved that it was very suitable to even store. Yep. E even for temporal kind of, uh, maybe not temporal, but you know, this kind of yes. log and... Yes, it's actually something I talk, uh, I talk a bit with Greg Young, uh, the fact that you can have some kind of projection, uh, not projection, but a subscription that will run the query and continue to emit uh, event based upon that query is actually also something uh, very powerful. Yeah, because uh, that, that that's the nature of that kind of database because uh, the the temporal aspects are, are I mean you only get new data and and being able to continue to product but then the the, the SQL you, uh, you you demonstrated mm -hmm. works on on live data then or is it yes. also like the whole history and then going it can off? it can yes it can it can it can work on live data and it can also work on that as we already persisted it's yeah. It's very flexible because internally the REPL is uh, a SQL interpreter. So we can plug whatever we want, actually. Oh, that's that. And the new interaction, the uh, new interaction I added uh, because I also I tried to, I started that work probably a week ago or two weeks ago. I tried to extract the SQL interpreter I implemented into that SQL into uh, a library. And the goal was to make that interpreter agnostic, so we could plug multiple uh, sources with, without the, any friction. Uh, so multiple uh, database, you mean? Database, or even some code, or uh, uh, REST calls, whatever you want. It's uh, 
that's uh, that's the idea. I made some I made some strides. It's not complete yet, but hopefully uh, with enough time it will be uh, it will be ready. It's in Rust, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Why uh, obviously? <laughs> why? Uh, uh, why? I think the first reason is actually Rust is a really decent programming language. Uh, the, the, um, they, the, the language itself provides a lot of, um, of uh, package with uh, great qualities. It's not, uh, I mean, most of, most of the packages are really, really good, actually. Okay. So it's not a language, even if I think, uh, I think for me, it's qualified as a mainstream language, but maybe people still think mainstream as C sharp, Java, and stuff like that. But when I compare, both packages, uh, both communities. Uh, or, uh, what I see is usually the Rust packages are much better mm -mm. compared to what I see, for example, in Java. So I don't want to uh, to diss any uh, Java maintainer here. It's just my experience. So I don't know. It's a valid one, but usually I think Rust program, Rust uh, maintainers, authors are way more. Uh, involved into the quality of their um, libraries. Oh, so yeah. that's yeah. mainly that. And it's also uh, has decent performance without having me to actually be serious with performance. Yeah, that's I, what I, I like too. Yeah, there's, there's probably another another um, factor in there is, I, exp I mean, I've did Java early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And there weren't that many packages as well there, or as many, uh, oh, the community was small uh, by some facts. It's amazing to say that now. Yeah. And actually, so the people involved in the community were uh, probably a bit more, uh, how, how should I say that, in, involved. Not that the people now are not involved, but I mean, the larger the group, the more uh diverse the quality can be in those in those uh, yes i think i think it's that's an it's a, it's a trend i think it's a i think it's a trend that we can verify obviously i don't have hard numbers to back it up but i will i will say yes yeah. for at a at a certain size i will say yes i will i will agree that if the community is too small it's not possible but at a given size, I think, yes, it's possible that you have uh, libraries of very good qualities. But I think the community of Rust actually incentivizes people of, on delivering good code. Yeah. Even if I'm not very um, into um, participating into communities, it's not really my thing. But I have to admit that it's a very welcoming community. So you are incentivized to participate and to partake into a project that will improve the quality of the deliveries uh, the Rust um, programming language provides. Yeah. That's cool, actually. Um, I don't really know the Rust community, to be honest. Um, uh, me, me neither. Uh, it's just that usually when I ask questions, I really have uh, prompt responses. And I never, ever actually be in a conflict with a Rust uh, individual. And it already happened with Haskell and Scala multiple times, but for some reason, it never happened in Rust. So I don't know, maybe I find out uh, a secret uh, that other community needs to replicate. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe they find something. Uh, if you find a trick, just just pass it on to us because <laughs> the event sourcing community needs to 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 grow as well, and we need to keep it uh, friendly as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do we do have a places where we can uh, where we have improve. Uh, uh, oh no, not improve. I think uh, there, there are a few communities looking at event sourcing which are. Friendly as well, where question get answer and uh, there might be some trolling here and there, but it's all in good faith. Uh, so, 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 trolling is okay. Trolling is okay. Um, that's not the, the problem. Yeah. I think all the event sourcing is for when I looked at it, it was very .NET uh, oriented. Yeah. 
So yeah, maybe a little bit more diversity, uh, diversity in terms of text stack. This is actually what we're actually trying to achieve with Vivian Store by providing multiple a uh, client on that regard. But yeah. Yeah, and and probably why we we now have people who are actually able to 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 program in how many languages did you already mention uh, in the last few minutes? Uh, five or six. Yeah, <laughs> but that's uh, the goal. That's the goal that everybody can just use a database and whatever the language they have, just they have a, a way to communicate the database. I think will uh, extend the outreach of. Uh, Anything related to events also. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's that's one of the goal. That's one why I also I joined the company. It's mm. the, the the motto is oh, if people are doing event sourcing in a good way mm. and and get enough guidance for it, mm. um, then then it's good for the company. I, I like that. I, I like that that principle. <clears throat> Um, back, back, back on the REPL thing, uh, mm -hmm. so, so you're building REPL, any other kind of enhancement you see that could be done or things that experiments and... Uh, REPL wise, mm, I think anything, anything, uh, anything, um, Because we got the goal, as I said, was to improve uh, the fact you can navigate through your data. But let's say we already have that with the REPL I provided. Probably what can be achieved will be uh, stuff that's probably not related to the REPL, the fact that I have an history of all the command I used. Uh, the, the fact maybe we can have, we can import libraries or um, source of data directly there. Like, okay, I want to query or to interact with two different uh, event store DB, for example. Right now we don't have that. And I know we have customers with uh, multiple um, event store DB. So yeah, as I will say, I will say being able to, uh, to uh, to connect multiple data source. I would yep. rather have that data source to be even store DB, but as I said, with the work I did, we can actually extend that to uh, almost anything. But yeah, I will say being able to plug everything uh, we want to just be able to, to navigate through the data itself. Yeah. yeah. The, or maybe the, add in another language, maybe, maybe .NET, why not? Uh, C Sharp, uh, I mean, <laughs> possibly, yeah. Yeah, uh, C sharp link queries, uh, and uh, you can mm -hmm. interact with your data. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that would be cool for a lot of mm -hmm. .NET developers, but not for the other one who are not on uh, .NET. But that, yeah, that's uh, why uh, we try to uh, to keep uh, language agnostic. Like I think SQL, for example, and Lua are very good. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, that that's one of the thing I'm I'm trying. I find I find the SQL the the fact that you mentioned SQL quite interesting because one of the thing I'm missing because obviously we have other uh, storage. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to say competitors because, uh, but I mean there are alternative to event store uh, mm -hmm. database, and. Uh, the, the fact that you mentioned SQL makes me think of ANSI SQL, which defines and the type of queries you can do, what the capabilities, mm -hmm. but also have some kind of, um, uh, um, oh, how do you say that? Um, oh, I forgot the, I forgot the word, uh, standards around, this is how the data looks like. This mm -hmm. is how the database looks like. I can, I can have schema-like, um, uh, functionality, and I mean, in database world, I have a, a table which is in a schema, which is mm -hmm. in a certain server, mm -hmm. uh, and then I have like those meta information I can query about it. Mm -hmm. And this is something missing. And mm -hmm. add SQL standardized SQL capabilities over an event store mm -hmm. uh, storage, and add some standard. Uh, um, 
um, uh, schema manipulation language saying, oh, hey, look, I have that kind of stream and I expect that mm -hmm. kind of events, or um, I have this kind of tree of, 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 of streams that relations, are- that Relations, are totally relations, re relations, oh, yeah. Relations, mm -hmm. or just the concept of stream and events being mm -hmm. really good defined. If you, if you could define that, that would be like, my ultimate dream, my utopia for 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 event sourcing, you know, and it's equal for event sourced uh, well, data. Well, with the REPL, we were able to do joins uh, to the sub queries, so technically we're able to ask for, oh, I got that data from that stream, I got that data from that stream. Please join it and apply a predicate upon that. It's already possible with the REPL, uh, but yes, we can extend that to, uh, as you said, oh, I want to query, for example, the shape of the stream. Uh, it's actually possible to do that too. Right now, I didn't implement it, but it's just a matter of understanding the intent of the user. So for example, if it names the, uh, the, the, um, the table it wants a specific name, a name we can agree, for example, I will interpret that as, oh, it asks for the shape of the stream so I can do whatever needs to be done in the background and return the shape of the stream as uh, rows coming mm -hmm. from uh, a table. But I like the fact that with SQL, you got that. It's just an abstraction for asking data. And even if we can, we can say, oh, yes, yeah, SQL, it's uh, old, uh, it's unsecure in a way you have to prepare a statement to escape uh, to avoid um, SQL injection doesn't it, it still mean that it doesn't mean that SQL itself doesn't have value. And I think the fact that the language was made in particular for people not technic uh, technical savvy, it was made for uh, a content for people not really into uh, uh, computers. Prove that it's an amazing uh, work an amazing way to interact with data. Maybe as a result, though, uh, there is a, another way to query data, right? But SQL is pretty standard. Uh, and it was also taught at when you just start uh, your uh, programming career. So I think it's, uh, it's a good fit for a lot of stuff we can do, definitely. Yeah. And, and when you look at it, any, any type of database ends up implementing some kind of SQL capabilities mm -hmm. in the end. Yeah, it's and funny, um, why? Because they try to position themselves as, oh, we are not a SQL database, we are no SQL database, something like that, but they still come back to some way of uh, expressing SQL queries into their non SQL database. So I think it's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's funny, but 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 because I guess I guess it's the thing that's itching you, being able to interact quickly with 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 the database and and try stuff and 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 uh, mm -hmm. and, and see how 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 you can reshape information into into yeah. some other ways and uh, so that 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 that's uh, I think that's probably the future of any any databases or mm -hmm. any any yeah. type of storage. But for me, the, the, the point is we, we should really use SQL as a way to interact with data, but like introspecting the data I got, not, not really for an application. For example, I don't really like using an application that calls a SQL queries, for example, because it's, it's, it will be a source of pain at some point because of, okay, I have to migrate that table in that table chain and stuff like that. Whereas if I use SQL for what it is, it is to actually be able to uh, navigate your data. So it's possible you came up with an idea or a pattern within your data, thanks to uh, having capabilities like SQL. That's, that's what I'm saying here. So it's not really the app in particular, it's being able to just uh, interactively uh, read your data. You, you know what you should look, I don't know if you know log parser. That's a really old tool from Microsoft. Mm -hmm. uh, and the name is quite correct. It's log parser. You can pass. It's not being maintained, unfortunately, but it's a SQL interpreter mm -hmm. over any data source to any 
data sync. Mm -hmm. So you can write SQL against your uh, web server log. You can write SQL against your file system. You can write SQL over XML. Mm -hmm. uh, JSON not because JSON didn't exist at the time. And again, mm -hmm. maybe you could write something for it. And that has been my go-to tool for a lot of things when I needed to, to, to just get information about something. And I mean, any data source is any data source. Can mm -hmm. even, there's even a plugin for, for, for writing your own in, in COM and in .NET, probably .NET 2 or something. But anyway, um, and that's exactly the same. It's like SQL queries. And of course, if you, if you have like a standard w 3 c uh, 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 web server log, you will have mm -hmm. your fields predefined and so on. But that's exactly the same. Select there from where uh, um, response is 400. Mm -hmm. well, you get everything. And super fast. I mean, over gigabytes of data, it's like, I've done yeah. some, uh, I've done some, uh, some, um, uh, some forensic using that, uh, finding out what that user actually did, uh, and and any kind of log, any kind of shape of log, and so that that that's kind of another proof of of, of what you're saying. You can you mm. can use SQL like for almost everything, yeah. if not anything. But it was made for that. <laughs> it was made for being able to query stuff. In a, general, in, a, in a generalized way, so. Yeah, and, mm. and uh, the, you have a background in, in computer. I mean, you studied computer science. Yeah, I have a background in uh, computer engineering, uh, which I think is qualified as, because I'm not, I'm not, I don't remember the, the international equivalent of my diploma, but it's a master degree in computer science, basically. I also got a little bit of my background. I have a, how you call it, a license in math. So I don't know how, how it translates to American uh, diploma, maybe uh, MB, uh, MBA. Oh, no, not maybe MBA. That's probably uh, business. Uh, uh, yes, it's too business oriented. <laughs> but, but, yeah. But, but yeah, I have a, a computer science background. So, so, so probably my last question is because you, you talk about SQL and how, how it's, do you read a lot of papers? And I mean, theoretical papers. Uh, yes, not, maybe not right now, but I used to, to, to read a lot of them, uh, I would say two, three years ago. It was actually related to functional programming. Yeah. Because it's still it's still what I prefer, even if I do a lot of Rust, I still prefer the way I'm writing code in Haskell. I still think it's a, personally a superior way of writing program. Uh, even if I do acknowledge right now that Rust is probably the one I will use for whatever needs to be done, and I need to be uh, needs to be delivered in production, I will probably do in Rust. But I still think Haskell is. Uh, as figuring out the way of writing program in a very different and safe way. Yeah. Lambda. Hmm? Lambdas. Yeah. Yeah. There yeah. is also also the type system itself, what we can what can be achieved with the type system. The fact that the type system is actually programmable. Yeah. So I mean we, we, we can implement we can implement uh, invariant into the type system in a way that Russ can only dream of. Uh, you haven't picked it up in mainstream yet. So maybe it will one day. One day. I mean, the language is already 40 years ago, uh, 40 years old, but <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, but see, uh, I mean, that's the, yeah, that, 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 that's the thing. The best thing is probably not in use always in, 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 in companies, but I mm. mean, it's, yeah. uh, it's always the thing to, to, to find. Um, I think, uh, we can we can we can close it down. Any mm -hmm. any last words? Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I try try to to um, to look what? at what is currently done on the SQL side uh, on the REPL side. Uh, I know I, I haven't documented it uh, properly yet. I think the readme is almost inexistent. Uh, it's uh, so, uh, it's it's in the open. 
Yes, uh, the REPL is uh, open source. The SQL uh, and the extraction of the SQL interpreter is also open source. It's named uh, SQL. I think it's named SQL in French, but it sounds like SQL in English. Uh, um, so yeah, this is uh, all my stuff. Most I of my work are open source. Most of cool, it. cool. Um, we'll, we'll add the, the, the links to the repos uh, when this goes out. Uh, on wherever platform this will go out. So that, uh, that right. that's pretty cool. And I do say SQL as well. Just for the record, we're both French speaking. So it's very strange to speak in English to each other. Yeah, <laughs> to pronounce it SQL, it's also weird, but... SQL? <laughs> no, it's SQL. Not in French. In French, we said uh, SQL. SQL, yeah. 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 <laughs> in, in Dutch, we say SQL. Um, okay. So that's that. That's kind of the same. Th thank you very much for your time, Yorick. Ah, uh, thank uh, you for having me uh, today. Yeah, and um, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye.